My name is Ferrari Khan. In your eyes, I might look like a normal 12-year-old child. However, almost two years ago, I went through a journey that taught me how precious life is. I was always the healthy kid. I had a lot of after-school activities such as karate, sailing, swimming, guitar lessons, and on some afternoons, I would ride my bike. I lived a normal life with a normal family on top of a hill called Todman's Peak. We also had a cat I sometimes referred to as my brother called Winter. <laughs> this was around late April, and my school had an exhibition project to do. I was put in a group with my friends, and the theme was life on land. So we would volunteer at the Humane Society to help out the animals. We literally fell in love with the animals there. Even after the exhibition, we went to the Humane Society to hang out. I think it was around a Thursday night, and I realized there was a pain in my right knee. So I go to karate. Injuries are common. So, I, so what I will usually do is I'll go to bed and sleep it out. However, the next morning, that wasn't the case. The pain was still there. I still went to school, though, and I did not have to call my parents to come and pick me up. But as the days went by, the pain only got worse. It even spread to my knee and my hip. Someday that week, I went to my grandparents' house for dinner. My grandma then said I was getting pale. So that weekend, my parents took me to the doctors. They ordered a blood test, and the results, what you usually expect in a normal 11-year-old at my age at the time. However, with that information, the pain didn't stop. It got worse. Now it spread to my right kidney. This was around early May now, and the video game Battlefield 1 had just came out. Me being an outside person, I surprisingly even liked the game. I would play at my grandma's house, and when my cousin came home from school, he would play with me. And at home, I would lay on a chair with my cat, Winter. He knew something was wrong. <laughs> the next weekend, the pain still began to get worse, and my parents took me to the doctors again. They ordered another blood test. This time, it was different. My white blood cells were skyrocketing, and my hemoglobin and my platelets were sinking, indicating that I have a disinfection. For those reasons, and for blood tests, imaging tests, and fever, I was admitted to Bougainvillea Hospital. On the imaging tests, they found that there was a lesion in my right kidney, and my liver was inflamed. My diagnosis? Wilms tumor, a disease that affects toddlers. After four days, they decided to medically evacuate me to Miami. The way how that works is an ambulance comes to my hospital, they take me on a stretcher to the ambulance, and they drive me to the airport. That drive was not like a drive in the park. That drive was more like a hammock in a tornado. Yeah, that better suits it. <laughs> when I arrived, to the airport, I had my own private plane to take my parents and I to Miami. I always wanted my own private plane, not like this one though. <laughs> I always wanted my own glass of cider, apple being my favorite. This time I had my own bag of fluids and painkillers. By the time I reached the hospital, I was already screaming in pain. I was. I was told if I was two days late, I could have been no more. Finally, for the first time in weeks, I got to relax with the help of morphine, a painkiller. The doctors were ordered to do a surgery to remove my right kidney, but they decided to do some more blood tests and imaging tests. Thank God they did that, because they realized it wasn't Wilms' tumor. It was actually non-Hodgkin's Burkitt's leukemia, stage four, a very aggressive cancer. In fact, one of the most fastest spreading cancer. 
due to the amount of abnormal cells in my body found on the lumbar punctures, the disease will, be have to treat it, will have to be treated with equally aggressive chemotherapy. My protocol was drafted over seven cycles to last nine months. During my treatment, if I were to say which one was my hardest one to take on, it would definitely be the first one, because on the first one, which is also known as preface, I had all the side effects imaginable. Sometimes, on some days, I didn't have the strength to even sit up to eat my own food. On the seventh one, I was suffering from homesickness, anxiety, and insomnia. I couldn't even call my relatives and my grandparents back here in the BVI because I would start crying on how much I missed them. During my treatment, you could imagine how much I missed the BVI. Me and my friends at the Humane Society, me and my cat, Battlefield One, my relatives, birthday parties. Instead of being there, I was in a hospital in a cold room fighting for my life. I was always interested in the evolution of Earth and very curious of life. Being so critically ill made me realize how precious life is. Now this is what I learned from my ordeal thus far. One, the unarguable fact that life is a blessing. And two, I made a lot of friends what, receiving treatment at the same time as me in the hospital. We sat, ate lunch together, we played Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and, the sa and those same people, some of them, sadly, did not make it. This is why I want to talk about children fighting cancer. Finally, the date, January 10, 2018, is a date I would never forget. Because on that date, I returned back here to the BVI. I was so glad when the warm BVI breeze hit me. Back when I returned here, I was so eager to start back school again. And when I finally did back in the swing of things, I was supposed to do a science project on a scientist of my choice. <coughs> so I chose <coughs> Dr. Jane Goodall. Uh, primatologist and an anthropologist. Not long after that, I learned about the Jane Goodall Roots and Shoots program. It's a global organization. And I thought that would be a good idea to have one here in the BVI. As you may imagine, I kept in touch with my doctors, and I told them that I wanted to start one here in the BVI. They were very proud of me. And my parents were also very proud of me, too. So. They did the only logical thing. They did all the paperwork, and it got approved by the government. <laughs> Roots and Shoots BVI is now a nonprofit profit organization that organizes youth-led programs helping people, animals, and the environment here in the BVI. So far, we carried. <laughs> so far, we carried out projects to make kindness new cool in schools take part in environmental projects like planting trees on school campuses, raising awareness for BVI Cancer Society and the Humane Society, two charities which are very close to my heart. We also held a game changer night that's unplugged to reconnect in order to bring back family time and to move away from the electronic screens. These are all projects overseen by adults, but they were designed and executed by youths. Let me tell you something. You don't have to go through what I have been through in order to realize how much help this world needs. For me, I am glad to be alive, and I want to give back to the people who selflessly took their time to make me feel better. I can't wait to pay it forward when I grow up. When I grow up, I want to be a pediatric hematologist, oncologist, a doctor who specializes in kids with blood cancer. The time is now to do this. 
The time is now to help the environment. The time is now to help people. The time is now to realize that animals are being abused and they're going, they're be, going to be driven to extinction. And we are the ones who have the power to help them. I would like to end my speech with a quote. You cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference, and it's up to you to decide what difference you want to make. By Dr. Jane Goodall. Thank you.